Hi, welcome to the second tutorial for the creating Fallout 4 and Unreal Engine 4 series. Today we're going to be actually creating the blueprint for the radiation barrel so that it inflicts radiation upon our character. So in the previous episode, what we did was we imported our barrel with its textures and its LOD levels and created its material along with some mitmaps for the barrel and set it up so that at certain distances the quality of the barrel decreases to save time on rendering and overall optimize our game. We also set up the basics of the blueprint which we'll be using here now uh, where we just placed in our static mesh and the um, sphere collision we'll be using. To actually inflict radiation damage or just radiation onto our character, our character first of all needs to have some radiation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our third person character blueprint, double click to open, and we'll open up in either the event graph or the viewport. Now we'll just go to the event graph, and what we need is a new variable. And I'm going to name this F radiation level. And I'm going to change its value to a float and compile, leaving its default value at zero. Now I chose the name F radiation level because it's a float, so F lets me know that it's a float. Radiation level because it's my character's radiation level. So it all fits together and it's a nicely named variable. I'll be doing a tutorial on naming schemes and variables soon, so just look out for that. So now we've got our radiation level, we, what we want is we want a function that will increase the amount of radiation we're receiving. Because obviously in the Fallout world you're getting radiation from just puddles in the ground, um, sometimes the rain, being attacked, just drinking dirty water, you know, so you get radiation a lot. So you need to kind of just have a function to just call, instead of setting that same blueprint, that same code up in every single thing. So we're just going to go to our function and we're going to create a function named increase rad level. Very simply named and what we need is an input. So we'll click new and I'm just going to do radiation uh, inflicted and change it to a float. And what this means is when we call it from, say, our barrel, we're going to put in the amount of radiation it's going to affect our character by, and then this is that value, this is where we'll get it from. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually set our new radiation level. So we'll click set, drag it in, click set, and we'll also get float, add a float. And what we'll do is we'll put radiation inflicted in the top, We'll get our current radiation level, and then we'll add those together to get our new radiation level. And then we'll hit compile, and that's it. That's an easy way to set up our radiation level. Now you saw in my previous example, in the previous episode, I had it output a string to the screen that said, you are suffering from minor radiation poisoning when you had 25 rads. I'm using rads as percentage here. Um, if you wanted to create something more along the Fallout style, I believe there's a value they use, so you can just uh, see what that is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a branch. And I'm going to, after I've set it, check what my current radiation level is. And I'm going to check if it is greater than or equal to 25 in the beginning. And that's going to be my condition. Now, if we just had it like this and said, right, print shrink from here, it's going to do it every time this function is called. So if you're standing in the barrel, it's just going to keep saying, uh, you are suffering from minor rad poisoning, you are suffering from minor rad poisoning, you are suffering from minor rad poisoning, and that's not really kind of what we want. That's just going to annoy the player, and it's a bit inefficient. So to do this, we're just going to add a variable that will be B um, is radiated and I'm going to set that to a boolean and have it as false from the beginning. Now if it's greater than or equal to 25, then I'm going to see if we've already told the player that we've been radiated. So to do that, I'm going to just use it all in one if statement. And I'm going to get a not boolean. And I'm going to get the and boolean. And so what this is going to do is we're going to put our greater than or equal to 25 in the top. Our B is radiated not in the bottom, 
and then we're going to use that as our condition. So this is saying, is it greater than or equal to 25? Yes. Okay. Is B is radiated not true? So is it false? If it is, then we want to output to the user, hey, you're radiated. So this way we can keep on top of it and it's not going to keep repeating the code. So that's what not does for a boolean. So now we'll just print our string, print string, and this is just to print onto the screen. Um, later down the line we'll be looking at UI elements and we'll be putting it in a box so the player can actually see it and be de told in a more good looking manner rather than just some purple text in the top left corner of the screen. But for now that's where we're going to put it. And we're going to put you are suffering from minor rad poisoning. And then we'll set B is radiated to true. If it's false, don't do anything. We don't need to do anything. So now we've got that, our player can be irradiated, but the barrel still is not irradiating them at this minute. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our event graph. I'm going to get rid of all those and go back into the viewport to the sphere and we're going to create an on component begin overlap. Go back to the viewport, click on the sphere collision again and on component end overlap. So these are two separate things. This is going to be when they enter the collision and when they leave the collision. So when they enter, I'm going to cast to my third person character. And using my other actor as my object. So this is going to say, is the person that has just walked in our third person character? If it is, let's radiate them. If not, don't. So I'm going to now create a boolean in our variables and I'm going to go b is player and I'm going to set that to true if it is our player. From here I'm going to create a branch statement that's going to check if b is player is true. And you'll see why I'll need that in just a moment because we did just set it so you know what would be the point. Now we're going to add a delay of one second and we're actually going to add a print string in the middle here. So now we've set everything up without the character now we just need to add the things that are specifically from the character. So as my third person character I want to get my F radiation level and I want to use that as my string so that's what we're going to output and then on, from the delay, we want to call our increase rad level. And the radiation inflicted is going to be whatever this barrel will inflict. Now at some point we'll look at how to create a dynamic radiation level. So you know how in Fallout when you get closer to the barrel, the heavier your radiation is. We'll look into creating that, but for now we're just going to use a static value. I'm just going to choose about two. And then f when it ends, we're going to go back to this branch. So what's going to happen now is it's going to set that the player has entered the field to true. Uh, we're going to output how much radiation they currently have. Then we're going to add a delay of one second and then increase the radiation level and then check if the player is still in the field. And then output the radiation and then increase the rad level. So we're increasing the radiation level every second whilst checking if they are still in the radiation field. Because if they're not in the radiation field, we don't want to be adding to their radiation level. And then the print string is just obviously to let us know what their current radiation status is. And then on the end overlap, we're going to take the cast to third person character again. If we can cast to it, then we set is player to false. And that's all we need to do. Because this is now, if this keeps looping, it'll just go, okay, it's false, end. So this won't keep running after that. Whilst the player is in the field, it will keep running. Now we just need to actually add the barrel to the level. So we'll go back to where I put the barrel, and we'll take our blueprint, and I'm just going to bring it up here, we'll twizzle it round, and we'll play. 
So now we've got our third person character, we're going to run over to that sketchy looking radiation barrel. And as you can see, my radiation level is now increasing by 2 in the top left hand corner. We'll just wait until it gets to 25, as it's almost there. There we go, you are suffering from minor rad poisoning, and our radiation levels continues to increase. Whilst we walk away, we are no longer being radiated. I saw the last one was 34, so when we go back in, it's now increased it again to 36. So I hope you enjoyed the second part of this tutorial, where we now created the radiation level in our character and created a barrel that can affect the radiation level. I hope you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up if you did, give it a thumbs down if you didn't. If your opinions are otherwise, or you have any questions, suggestions, comments, or just advice in general, leave it down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. There's obviously always Twitter, which is a more direct way of getting at me, which is at Sam underscore BA underscore Jones 97. I also have a new Facebook page, which is in the description below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks, guys. Bye.